Hello, thank you for joining me today. We've been reading through A Course in Miracles, the main text, and today we're going to continue our reading of chapter 25, The Justice of God, and we'll read section eight, The Rock of Salvation. That'll be the only section we read today as this is a rather long, long section. The Rock of Salvation. Yet if the Holy Spirit can commute each sentence that you laid upon yourself into a blessing, then it cannot be a sin. Sin is the only thing in all the world that cannot change. It is immutable. And on this changelessness be the world depends. Uh, on this changelessness, the world depends. The magic of the world can be seen to hide the pain of sin from sinners and deceive with glitter and with guile. Yet each one knows the cost of sin is death. And so it is. For sin is a request for death, a wish to make the world's foundation sure as love, dependable as heaven, and as strong as God himself. The world is safe from love to everyone who thinks sin is possible, nor will it change. Yet is it possible what God created not would share the attributes of his creation when it opposes it in every way? It cannot be the sinner's wish for death is just as strong as is the will, as is God's will for life. Nor can the basis of a world he did not make be firm and sure as heaven. How could it be that hell and heaven are the same? And is it possible that what he did not will cannot be changed? What is immutable besides his will? And what can share its attributes except itself? What wish can rise against his will and be immutable? If you could realize nothing is changeless but the will of God, this would not be difficult for you, for it is this that you do not believe. Yet there is nothing else you could believe if you but looked at what really is. Let us go back to what we said before and think of it more carefully. It must be so that either God is mad or this world a place of madness. Not one thought of his makes any sense at all within this world. And nothing that the world believes as true has any meaning in his mind at all. What makes no sense and has no meaning is insanity. And what is madness cannot be truth. If one belief so deeply valued here were true, then every thought God ever had is an illusion. And if but one thought of his is true, then all beliefs the world gives any meaning to are false and make no sense at all. This is the choice you make. Do not attempt to see it differently, nor twist it into something it is not. For only this decision can you make. The rest is up to God and not to you. To justify one value that the world upholds is to deny your father's sanity and yours. For God and his beloved son do not think differently. And it is the agreement, agreement of their thought that makes the son a co-creator with the mind whose thought created him. So if he chooses to believe one thought opposed to truth, he has decided he is not his father's son because the son is mad and sanity must lie apart from both the father and the son. This you believe. Think not that this belief depends upon the form it takes. Who thinks the world in, is sane in any way is justified in anything it thinks or is maintained by any form of reason believes this to be true. 
Sin is not real because the Father and the Son are not insane. This world is meaningless because it rests on sin. Who could create the changeless if it does not rest on truth? The Holy, Sp sorry, the Holy Spirit has the power to change the whole foundation of the world you see to something else a basis not insane, on which a sane perception can be based, another world perceived. And one in which nothing is contradicted that would lead the Son of God to sanity and joy. Nothing attests to death and cruelty, to separation and to differences. For here is everything perceived as one, and no one loses that each may gain. Test everything that you believe against this one requirement and understand that everything that meets this one demand is worthy of your faith, but nothing else. What is not love is sin, and either one perceives the other as sane and meaningless. Love is the basis for a world perceived as wholly mad to sinners who believe theirs is the way to sanity. But sin is equally insane within the sight of love, whose gentle eyes would look upon madness and rest peacefully on truth. Each sees a world immutable as each defines the changelessness and eternal truth of what you are, and each reflects a view of what the Father and the Son must be, make that viewpoint meaningful and sane. Your special function is the special form in which the fact that God is not insane appears most sensible and meaningful to you. The content is the same. The form is suited to your special needs and to the special time and place in which you think you find yourself and where you can be free of place and time and all that you believe must limit you. The Son of God cannot be bound by time nor place nor anything God did not will, yet of his will is seen as madness. Sorry, yet if his will is seen as madness, then the form of sanity, which makes it most acceptable to those who are insane, requires special choice. Nor can this choice be made by the insane, whose problem is their choices are not free and made with reason in the light of sense. It would be madness to entrust salvation to the insane because he is not mad as God appointed one as sane as he, to rise a saner, raise a saner world to meet the sight of everyone whose insanity, who chose insanity as his salvation. Let me read this again. It would be madness to entrust salvation to the insane because he is not mad has God appointed one as sane as he to raise a saner world to meet the sight of everyone whose insanity, who chose insanity as his salvation. To this one is given the choice of form most suitable to him, one which will not attack the world he sees, but enter in into it in quietness and show him he is mad. This one but points to an alternative, another way of looking at what he has seen before and recognizes the world in which he lives and thought he understood before. Now must he question this because the form of the alternative is one which he cannot deny nor overlook nor fail completely to perceive at all. To each, his special function is designed 
to be perceived as possible and more and more desired as it proves to him that it is an alternative he really wants. From this position does his sinfulness and all the sin he sees within the world offer him less and less. Until he comes to understand, it cost, until he comes to understand, it cost him his sanity and stands between him and whatever hope he has of being sane. Nor is he left without escape from madness, for he has a special part in everyone's escape. He can no more be left outside without a special function in the hope of peace, then could the father overlook his son and pass him by in carelessness, in careless thoughtlessness. What is dependable except God's love? And where does sanity abide except in him? The one who speaks for him can show him this in the alternative he chose especially for you. It is God's will that you remember this, and so emerge from deepest mourning into perfect joy. Accept the function that has been assigned to you in God's own plan to show his son that hell and heaven are different, not the same, and that in heaven they are all the same without the differences which would have made a hell of heaven and a heaven of hell had such insanity been possible. The whole belief that someone loses but reflects the underlying tenet of God must be insane. For in this world, it seems that one must gain because another lost. If this were true, then God is mad indeed. But what is this belief except a form of the more basic tenet, sin is real and rules the world? For every little gain must someone lose and pay ex exact amount in blood and suffering. For otherwise would evil triumph and destruction be the total cost of any gain at all. You who believe that God is mad, look carefully at this and understand that it must either, it must be either God or this must be insane, but hardly both. Salvation is rebirth of the name Oh, sorry. Salvation is rebirth of the idea no one can lose for anyone to gain. And everyone must gain if anyone could would be a gainer. Here is sanity restored. And on this single rock of truth, can faith in God's eternal sadness rest in perfect, perfect confidence and perfect peace? Reason is satisfied for all insane beliefs can be corrected here, and sin must be impossible, if this is true. This is the rock upon which salvation rests, the vantage point from which the Holy Spirit gives meaning and direction to the plan in which our, your special function has a part. For here your special function is made whole because it shares the function of the whole. Remember, all temptation is but this, a mad belief that God's insanity would make you sane and give you what you want, that either God or you must lose to madness because your aims cannot be reconciled. Death demands life, but life is not maintained at any cost. No one can suffer for the will of God to be fulfilled. Salvation is his will because you share it not for you alone, but for the self that is the son of God. He cannot lose, for if he could, the loss would be the father's, and in him no loss is possible. And this is sane, because it is the truth. So, um, I think that concludes section eight, the rock of salvation. If you'd like support for this chapter or section rather, you can reach out to 907-351-3003. Texting is best, but you can also call 
you'll probably end up leaving a message, but I will get back to you. And uh, you can also visit me on the web at lindalamp.shop, lindalamp.com, or at the Facebook Love by Light group. Thank you again for joining me today, and we'll see you for the next reading. Namaste and much love.